All right, so welcome back to a new one on this channel. And on this one, we need to talk about the retrospective recording. Now, this one is a more MIDI oriented feature, but you do have something very similar for audio. Okay, so let's just start with MIDI first. If you don't know what retrospective recording is, the DAW is going to store your incoming signal, your MIDI signal, and it stores everything in a buffer in memory. So if you're jamming or maybe just trying some ideas, you can recall the part that you played, even if you're not recording. So yeah, if you're fooling around and you say, oh man, that, you know, that part, you know, was really good and oh but it was not recording you can you can recall it with retrospective recording that's how useful it is so first of all you need to enable this and you need to go to, to studio one and then to options and once you go to options you need to go to advanced and right here to midi and you have the option right here if this this is disabled well it's just not going to work you need to have it enabled and then of course click apply so let's say I'm just fooling around and just playing some ideas. I'm going to be starting the playback and I'm just going to play something in the back. So let's say that, you know, that was cool and, you know, I was not recording. Now, if you have the rec and the monitor enable, it's recording behind the scenes. It's storing this information in a buffer so you can recall it. And the way to do, to do it, if you had this enable and this, you know, and the monitor enable, you can go right here. You can have one or the other one, right? You don't need to have both enabled. But if you go right there, it's going to say retrospective recording. And if you have a, you know, this symbol, if it's red, it means that there's something in memory so you can recall it if i click it it's gonna give me back what i've recorded and if i just play it back there you go you just get it now once you recall it it's gonna go uh, white or just gray it's gonna gray it out because there's nothing in memory if i delete this you know, we are back to nothing. Now, uh, the retrospective recording starts recording as soon as you play a key. So if I'm if I go right there and just do play, nothing is getting recorded. But when I play something, it's, it's just remembering everything I'm doing. And if I click it, it's going to recall it from here, right? Now, what if I had a loop, right? So maybe I have a loop right here. I want to loop this section and I want to try uh, some ideas over the same loop, but I don't want to lose every take. So first of all, you need to have takes enabled uh, on your Studio One, uh, you know, session. So it's going to record the take, you know, it works that way. So if I go right here, I do the playback and I start playing. So I recorded like four or maybe five takes. So this is going to give you the takes. So this is how it works and it's really cool. So let me just bring this down. So you, we can see the different takes and of course we can audition them all. And this is more related to takes. It got nothing to do with retrospective recording. If I want to hear this one, it's gonna go up or maybe this one. And then you, you know, you can just try different ideas and you can safely recall them and you never lose them. You can still this one recording, right? But maybe you're just, you know, fooling around and uh, this is going to remember it for you. So I'm going to delete everything and start over. Now this, uh, the retrospective recording will not just record the MIDI notes, you know, the notes on your keyboard. It's going to record the filter or whatever, whatever automation or modulation that you do with your MIDI controller. If I go to my Atoms Q and if I start playing back, you know, can start the playback. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna be moving the knob number one on my item SQ, which is it's gonna be the cutoff. And if I move this, notice that this goes red. So it's just recording the automation. So you can even do this on a track and bring the automation in. If I stop it and bring it back, we can see the automation right here. Let me just close this. If I go to cutoff, 
we can, you know, we can see the automation. I'm going to delete everything again. I'm going to start over. And what you need to know is that you can do this while playback is, you know, very useful because you want, you just, you know, maybe want to jam with whatever it is that you have on your session. But this will also start recording if you're stopped. So I'm going to go all the way to the beginning. As soon as I play a note, it will start recording. Right? So this is just doing it. When I recall it, it's just going to bring it right here. Now, of course, depending on what you're doing right here at the top, it's going to quantize the input. Notice that everything is pretty much quantized. And this is, again, completely up to you, depends on the settings. So you can, uh, you know, do retrospective recording while you're doing the playback or while you're, you know, stopped. So one more thing that you need to know is that when you are working with the retrospective recording, each of the tracks have independent buffers. So it's just going to store them independently. So you might have different tracks with maybe, you know, a controller that can do different things or different controllers. And uh, it's going to remember different things for each of the tracks, right? So that's going to work. So what's going to happen with audio? Do we have something like retrospective recording with audio? No, we don't. But yes, we do. So it doesn't work the same because it has a different pur it has a different purpose, uh, but we can get something like it. So let me just you know give you the example how this works. So I'm pretty sure that this happened to you. Maybe you're tracking an audio track. You're you know recording a guitar, for example, and when it starts recording, it starts recording right here or the three, right? But what gets recorded is starts right here. And maybe when you're playing a guitar, you're going to start strumming maybe from here. So this part doesn't get recorded. But yes, you know, it's going to get recorded if you have a feature enable on Studio One. If you go to Options and you go to Advanced and then you go to not to MIDI, to Audio, right here at the bottom, it says pre-recorded audio input. So by default, this is going to be like five seconds, something like that. So it's going to pre-record the audio input. So when you record something, uh, you can extend. Let me just close this first. When you record and you notice that you have something right here that didn't get recorded. Well, Studio One, it's actually recording behind the scenes so you can extend it and, you know, get that part. So uh, we can achieve that uh, retrospective recording with audio by using this trick. You can go to advanced, then audio, and it's going to say pre-record input. Well, we can go to one minute and you have or you can only do you can only do one minute. Now, the catch is that you do need to record in order in order to catch it. So let's say um, I'm going to go right there at the beginning, right? So I'm going to start playing back. And I'm going to be playing something. Now, at some point, if you want to recover it, you need to do rec and then stop it. Because when you do so, you are going to be getting back right here. Remember, the buffer is to one minute. The pre-record, it's one minute. So you do get it back right here. All right, so that's the trick. So as long as you re always remember to do rec before you stop the playback, you can get up to one minute of pre-recorded input. That's the trick. But if you think about this, it's not retrospective recording. It's just, you know, a workaround, something like that. It only works with instrument tracks. Okay, so that's it. So hopefully you learned something on this one. And remember, if you liked all of this, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can go to the links at the description. You have PayPal, you have YouTube thanks, and you have Patreon, right? So see you on the next one.